How to not die when working on guitar amps. That is something I want to talk about today because I've got a whole bunch of amp mods that I want to make videos about. I put it out to you guys to see if it would be something that you're into and loads of you guys are like, yeah, that'd be great. But there's a couple of comments saying I should make some sort of safety video first. Now I know safety videos are probably the most boring videos on the planet, but anyway, I'll try and keep this short to the point just sit back, chill out, relax, watch this video and you might actually learn some stuff that'll save your life. Even if you've worked on amps before, there might be a really cool tip in here for you. How your tube amp can kill you. Well, if you didn't know, there are these things inside your amp called filter capacitors and those things can store charge just like a battery, but they can store hundreds of volts. Most amps around four to 500 volts, but I've worked on amps with upwards of around 700 volts inside. And if you touch that, you are gonna die, basically. I don't think there should be any other way to think about it. If you touch that sort of voltage, it's probably gonna stop your heart and that's gonna be the end of you. So something you really need to be aware of when working on these, they are freaking dangerous. So essential tools, there are three really essential tools that I like to use. Um, a decent multimeter, you're gonna need a multimeter if you're gonna work on tube amps, there's just no way around that one. Um, a chopstick, this is just for sort of probing around, moving wires, things like that. It'll These things will just save your life. One of the other most essential tools is a capacitor discharge tool. So this is one that I made and it, what it does is that it drains power from these capacitors because remember these capacitors can hold charge sometimes for days. So you can have your amp turned off and then a couple of days later go to work on it and there can be just lethal voltage hiding, waiting to kill you in there. Because one thing you gotta remember, the amp is not your friend. Another extremely important point when you're working on guitar amps, if you're not doing any live uh, testing, always unplug the IEC cable, just unplug it and, and pull it out at the wall as well, at both ends. I know it seems like overkill, but it's just a good habit to get into. If you don't need that cord plugged in there, just don't have it plugged in. I'll show you how to discharge, but before we get into that, there is another type of discharge tool that I see used. And it's just an alligator clip that's been snipped in half with a resistor soldered in the center and then insulated. And the idea is you clip one side of it to one side of the capacitor and the other side to the other. And that discharges that capacitor. Now, my big problem with this is there's two problems. Firstly, you do not want your fingers that close to a deadly voltage filled capacitor. That is just asking for death. And secondly, it is so easy just to accidentally leave that on. And then you'll go to start up your amp and now you've just killed your amp. So you've not only killed yourself, but you've killed your amp as well. A way better option is using one that's like this. This is a, a test probe for a multimeter and you can buy them fairly cheaply. And on this end here, I've soldered a 22K resistor, a three watt one. So it's got some quite big chunky legs onto an alligator clip. Now I clip this somewhere onto the chassis, right? So that's ground. And then I touch that to the positive side of the capacitor and that will slowly drain it away. The cool thing about this is I can actually run my multimeter at the same time. When I touch the capacitor, I can also touch the same leg of that capacitor with my multimeter and watch, literally watch the voltage drain away. Now, if you've never done this before, you wanna practice draining capacitors. You wanna start your amp up, fill those capacitors up, and then you wanna practice draining them out and checking everywhere with the multimeter. If you're ever gonna be removing components, you wanna be checking before you even remove them if there's lethal voltage there. It's just good to be absolutely paranoid. Okay, here's another tip here. If you're inside an amp like this, like a PCB based amp, and you can't really get to those filter caps because see they're sort of mounted on this side of the board, what you need to do is drain from your power tubes. So your power tubes in this case are here. There's your power tube pins and you wanna drain from these here. The other place to drain from would be where your output transformer connects to. I drain this uh, spot right here, this one labeled blue. I think a good rule of thumb is always just check. Check your tube pins, check everything you can for voltage. It's so easy for voltage just to be hiding somewhere, so make sure you just check everything. Chopstick, as I mentioned earlier, is great for moving things around. So if you're inside an amp and you've got a little bit of a noise or you've got a little bit of a problem, you can just wiggle and move things with your chopstick. It's one of those tools that just seems so ridiculously simple, but there's so many faults I've found just by doing that with a chopstick. So that is your friend, the chopstick will save your life. Thanks China for that one. Another thing you want is to have a 
clutter-free work area and you want a, something stable to get your amp on. This is an amp chassis cradle that I made probably 10 years ago and I've put hundreds of amps on this thing. It is ultra stable, but if you want to put it directly on your bench, right onto those transformers, as long as your tubes aren't touching anything, it's fine to do that. Just chock up the sides with something so it can't tip over. It has to be stable, okay, before you even start. Same with pulling the chassis out of that shell. Do not put your fingers up inside that chassis. Just grab the transformers and pull it out from there. It's obvious, it's logical stuff, but it's so easy to do this sort of thing if you're not really on the ball while you're doing it. You've constantly got to be thinking about the dangers that could be involved when working on these sort of amps. When I'm testing inside an amplifier, I'm using my multimeter and I might be doing some voltage tests. So I've got that side grounded. I always ground my hand or somewhere close by to the chassis. So I'm always testing like this. And I do that because if, if I do get a shock, it goes through my hand straight back into the chassis and the path is the shortest path possible. If I'm holding the chassis here, which I never ever do that by the way, but if you're holding, if I'm holding the chassis here with this hand and I get a shock in this hand, the electricity is going to travel right through my heart all the way to here. And that pretty much means you're going to die. Your heart's going to stop and that's the end of you. Don't have a floating hand. Have this hand behind your back, have it in your pocket, maybe grab the bench with it. But it needs to be doing something other than just in the air because when you are testing things, sometimes you can get little noises come out your amps if you're doing live testing or you can get like a little spark that might jump out. There's lots of things that can happen and give you a little fright, right? And you don't want to suddenly just go and shove your hand inside an amplifier and die. My mindset, I've always kind of kept a little bit of that fear and you want to be confident and you want to know what, you know, be confident in what you're doing, but you also want to keep a little bit of that fear so you don't get too relaxed. And the people that get hurt doing this sort of job are people that are just starting out, absolute newbies that don't really know what they're doing, and people that have been doing this for quite a long time and they're very comfortable. You get sort of comfortable around working with high voltage electricity, but if you don't have a little bit of that fear in there, you can get complacent and that can lead to really bad injury or death. So make sure you always keep a little bit of that fear. You definitely don't want it to say killed by Marshall JCM 800 on your gravestone. The other thing is don't do this sort of work if you're tired and don't do it if there are distractions around. So you don't want your phone sitting right there. You don't want to be watching YouTube. I mean, this is all pretty obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you've got kids like I have, I don't let them come into my workshop here when I'm working on amplifiers. They just can't come in. If you've got pets, get them out while you're working on them. You don't want any distractions. If you look down for one second, you can just touch the wrong thing and then poof, that's the end of you. The other thing is you don't want to be working on these amps if you're tired. So our workshop hours here are 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. So I do 10 hour open days. I won't work on high voltage amplifiers or any sort of tube amplifiers if I have to go inside the circuit from 4 p.m. I just have a rule where from 4 p.m. I'm just gonna be working on pedals or guitar work or anything like that, but not high voltage stuff. Get rid of those distractions and make sure you're nice and fresh. If you're really keen on doing amplifier mods, effects pedals, guitar mods, that sort of thing, and you like this sort of stuff, Subscribe to this channel because I do that sort of thing. It's stuff that I do in my day-to-day -day job and I love sharing that stuff with you guys. Plus, I really love coming up with all sorts of crazy ideas and things that I would never get to try normally. So hit that subscribe button and like this video if you haven't. It really helps get the video out there. I've also got a fourth wall page where I have uh, my workshop vlog and my favorite tools, things like that, and sort of exclusive extra things that I put on there from these YouTube videos. But I hope that helps, guys, and I'm really happy to be getting into these mods. It was just a quick overview of safety. Thinking logically is the best way to go. It'll keep you safe. Just don't touch, don't randomly start touching stuff inside an amp. Make sure you know what you're touching. Test and test again. Make sure there's no voltage there. Use um, tools to pull things off. Try not to ever use your fingers for anything. And don't use that stupid alligator clip cap discharge tool. Just make a proper one, please. Okay, guys, have a great week. We'll catch you next time.